Some say they're meaningless, irrelevant exhibition games. I love the bowl games. Bring on more bowl games. I love the bowl games. It's bowl season. If you're a college football fan, hey, this is the time of year that we get to see like-seeded teams take on other teams from other conferences. Love it, love it, love it. Let's look at the 10 best for 2022-23 right here at the Voice of College Football. 10th best bowl game, Oregon, North Carolina, going at it at the San Diego County Credit Union Holiday Bowl. Bo Nix on the field for what could be his final game at Oregon, maybe comes back for 2023, taking on the great freshman in Drake May. No Josh Downs playing for North Carolina. The odds makers love Oregon. I do too. Ducks are a 14-point favorite in this game. I knew that they would be a heavy favorite. I'm a bit surprised by the line bulging out to 14. However, this should have a lot of fireworks, should be a lot of fun. And of course, the history of the Holiday Bowl says this could be a classic. Our ninth best bowl would not necessarily have made the list otherwise, although I do like the matchup between Cincinnati and Louisville at the Wasabi Fenway Bowl on December 17th. But this is all about the coaching situation. Luke Fickle leaves Cincinnati, goes to Wisconsin, and he was initially going to be replaced by defensive coordinator Kerry Combs. But Cincinnati has hired itself a coach, and guess where he came from? Louisville. Scott Satterfield, of course, has left Louisville to coach Cincinnati. So his first game for the Bearcats will be on the sideline against Louisville. So he could pick up his first win of the season against a team that he knows much better than his own team. He's going to know the players on the other side better than his own players. And what's really interesting about this being played in a baseball stadium is that Scott Satterfield is going to stand on the same sideline as his old team, Louisville. So it's Louisville at Cincinnati at the Fenway Bowl, and it should be an interesting affair. Our eighth best bowl of the bowl season, UCF and Duke at the Military Bowl on December 28th. Give me Riley Leonard. Give me Mike Elko as one of the great reclamation projects in college football. Mike Elko has never been a major college coach. He leaves Texas A&M as defensive coordinator, comes to Duke, and Duke was a mess. They went 0-8 in the ACC. The previous season in 2020, they lost all but one ACC game. They'd lost 17 of 18 ACC games, and Duke not only went 8-4 under Mike Elko, they were competitive against everyone. And if not for a meltdown against North Carolina in which they were about to kick a field goal to go up two scores in the final couple minutes, they win the ACC Coastal. They go to the championship game to take on Clemson. You got John Rice Plumley leading the UCF offense. He accounted for 25 touchdowns. You got Ryan O'Keefe with 73 receptions for UCF as well. Should be a fun matchup. UCF taking on Duke in the Military Bowl. Our number seven best bowl of the bowl season. Texas San Antonio taking on Troy in the first ranked matchup of the season. Coming up on day one of bowl season. Friday, December 16th at the Duluth Trading Cure Bowl. This has been a fun bowl in recent years. Coastal Carolina has made it a fun one with uh, two heart stoppers the last two times out. This time it's the Sun Belt champion against the Conference USA champion. Now, Texas San Antonio, despite all of its recent success under Coach Jeff Trailer, has yet to win a bowl game. 0-3, and they lost their offensive coordinator, Will Stein, who's left for Oregon, but they've got one of the top quarterbacks in all of college football and Frank Harris completing 71% of his passes, taking on a Troy team that has not lost since that crazy Hail Mary play against App State, led by Gunnar Watson, who threw for 318 yards in the Sun Belt Conference Championship game. Ranked matchup here, Texas San Antonio and Troy in the December 16th Duluth Trading Cure Bowl. On to our sixth best bowl. Tax Slayer Gator Bowl, Notre Dame, South Carolina. Boy, the Gamecocks are hot. Will they stay hot, though, with a month off? Spencer Radler taking on Tyler Buckner as Buckner uh, gets off the deck. He's been injured. He's missed most of the season, but he's back for bowl season. South Carolina without Jaheim Bell as he is transferred to Florida State. But Spencer Radler leading those two amazing efforts for the Gamecocks who would look like 
pretty much an average middle-of-the-road team until they blasted Tennessee, scoring 63 points, and then the big upset for the first time in eight years in Death Valley against Clemson. Notre Dame, South Carolina, a couple eight and four teams get together in Jacksonville December 30th for the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. Now to the top five bowls. According to the Voice of College Football, we go to the Orange Bowl and a lot of orange on the field and all over the place. It's the Orange Bowl and it's Tennessee wearing their orange, Clemson wearing their orange, the ACC and the SEC get together. No Hendon Hooker, no Jalen White as he just announced that he will not participate in the Capital One Orange Bowl. Clemson a six and a half point favorite for obvious reasons with the personal losses on the Tennessee side. Clemson has Miles Murphy sitting out, but Clemson is known for bringing its players to the bowl season and not getting a whole lot of opt out. So we don't necessarily expect anything else. This could be the coming out party for one Cade Klubnik. Of course, he was on the field against South Carolina once DJ Uyangalele was benched and he is now transferred. December 30th, Orange Bowl, Tennessee, Clemson, winner should claim a top five final position in the rankings. Now let's get to the Rose Bowl in our number four game, Penn State, Utah. We've got the Pac-12 champion for a second consecutive season in Utah. Going back to the Rose Bowl, want to get a win this time as they put on quite a show against Ohio State, but lost to the Buckeyes 48-45 last year. Utes are a two and a half point favorite against Penn State. The Nittany Lions getting back to the Rose Bowl for the first time since that Saquon Barkley, uh, Sam Darnold showdown in 2016 at 52-49. So we've got Penn State as a two and a half point dog, Sean Clifford, but we could see Drew Aller, even though it's Clifford's final game at Penn State, a little bit of Drew Aller, the phenom who will take over the quarterbacking reins in 2023. Consider this is the best team in the Pac-12. According to the seedings, they won the Pac-12 championship in a sweep over USC, taking on a Penn State team that was clearly not as good as Ohio State and Michigan. The third seed in the Big Ten, Big Ten Pac-12, it's always the granddaddy. It's the Rose Bowl and our fourth best bowl of the bowl season. At number three, we go to the Alamo Bowl, which almost always produces a great matchup. We've got Texas taking on Washington. So Hudson Card has transferred. Of course, Quinn Ewers is back. He's healthy. He played the latter portion of the season. He was up and down despite his great talent. We saw him for the first time, of course, in the first quarter against Alabama, and he looked the part. He had an up and down season, taking on a guy that was tremendous almost the entire season, finished in the top seven of the Heisman voting in Michael Penix. Washington fans excited that Penix has announced that he's back for the 2023 season. Longhorns a four and a half point favorite. We expect this one to be a good one. It's Sark's current team taking on Sark's previous team. Washington, Texas, Pac-12 and Big 12 get together in the Alamo Bowl. Our top two games are the two with the highest stakes. So while we guess concerning the other games and the motivation and the incentive Who's going to play? Who's not going to play? How hard are they going to play? Not so here. Of course, it's for the national championship when Michigan and TCU get together at the Verbo Fiesta Bowl on New Year's Eve. Michigan's a seven and a half point favorite. Will they lean on? Will they push TCU all over the field? An undersized defense with that massive offensive line. That is even better than the Joe Moore award-winning offensive line from last season with Olu Oluwatimi at center for Michigan, the best in the business, Michigan. J.J. McCarthy, of course, his coming out party against Ohio State. Max Duggan almost won the Heisman Trophy, finishing second to Caleb Williams. And what a show he put on and what an effort against Kansas State in the Big 12 championship game. Michigan, TCU in the Fiesta Bowl. National semifinal, New Year's Eve, our number two bowl game of 2022-23. The number one bowl game is by far the two teams that have the most talent. And of course, there's so much on the line when Ohio State takes on Georgia at the Peach Bowl in the other national semifinal game on New Year's Eve. The Buckeyes are a six and a half point favorite. And my big question here is Ohio State's mental focus 
mindset and confidence for this game against Georgia. I know who Georgia is. They won a national championship last year. They had to go through Michigan and Alabama to get it done. They come back with a veteran star quarterback in Stetson Bennett. A great running game. A future NFL offensive line. And of course, the best defense in college football, led by the best defensive player in college football in Jalen Carter. Ohio State, though, I know they've got the talent to match Georgia, but they got obliterated in the fourth quarter by Michigan in losing by three scores. Where is their confidence? Where is their mindset? Where is their leadership? Does their leadership come from their quarterback, C.J. Stroud? Was their confidence shaken in that game? Or will they use that incentive, That's this second life that they've received, do they use this incentive, this motivation, this second life to galvanize the team and to show up and to show that they are the team that they were expected to be at the beginning of the season to win a national championship? Ohio State, Georgia, New Year's Eve, Peach Bowl in Atlanta, Georgia with the obvious home field advantage of sorts. It should be amazing. So those are our top 10 bowl games of the bowl season right here at the Voice of College Football. Would love to hear what you have to say down in the comments section below. Please subscribe to our channel here. Hit that bell for the notifications to know when we go live, which is constantly. Would love to hear from you during our next call-in show right here at the Voice of College Football.